So I'm going to do my second painting of the day. And this is going to be my last painting here in Nice because I do have a flight to catch in a few hours. So I'm going to have to paint quite quick or maybe it won't be my second painting because uh, I may miss the flight and have to paint here another day. But um, kind of hopefully that won't happen. I mean, I do love it here. It is absolutely amazing. So I'm going to paint this scene behind me, um, get some of the blue sea into the composition, uh, some of the palm trees. And I think this should be a nice scene to paint. It's quite late in the day now, so the sun is getting lower in the sky. The light's always beautiful here, but the light is particularly beautiful at this time of day. Remember, please subscribe to the channel and let's start painting. Here I'm painting in the composition using raw umber paint. And I really like the triangular shape of the bay, which is pointing towards these tall, tropical looking palm trees which are silhouetted against the sky. Here I'm starting to paint the sky using a flat synthetic brush. And although the sky is very blue, there is a variety of tones within the sky. For example, here along the horizon, the sky is lightest. It also has a misty quality, which is slightly warmer in color temperature than the other blues within the sky. And in order to paint the sky, I mix on my palette three slightly different color mixes for the sky. This light, slightly warm gray above the horizon, then a pale blue for the middle section of the sky, and then a slightly deeper blue for the higher up section of the sky, which has a bit more ultramarine blue mixed into this color mix. And as I paint the sky, I'm mostly using vertical brush strokes and subtly mix in these three separate mixes to create a soft transition from this light warmish glow above the horizon to a deeper blue further up on the painting. To paint the sea, I start by painting the sea on the horizon, which has a deep blue which is slightly purplish in hue. And to paint this I use pretty much pure ultramarine blue and then as the sea gets closer and closer to the foreground, it takes on a more greenish turquoise hue. And then in the foreground, there's actually some warm yellows and oranges where the water is shallower and you can see the seabed shining through the water. In the foreground and in the midground as well, when I look into the water, I can see the face of the waves in the sea. And this is quite a green hue to it. And around this, I paint in a cooler, lighter, bluish purple color, where the water is facing the sky and the sky is reflecting into the water. To paint these rocks, I start by painting in the dark blue, purplish color for the shadows as when painting outdoors, the shadows tend to have a blue hue to them, especially on white objects, as the shadows will receive a lot of reflected light from the sky, which typically has a blue cast to it. Once I painted in the shadow shapes, I then paint in the areas which I've left as canvas with a lighter, thicker color mix, which is mostly titanium white with a touch of yellow ochre, to paint the golden sunlight which is illuminating these rocks. As I'm painting a backlit scene, so I'm painting facing the sun, the values are a lot more graphic and also the shifts in hue are not as apparent as if I were to paint with the sun to my back like in my previous video where I paint with the sun to my back, basically looking at the scene which is directly behind me from where I'm painting here. Whereas painting into the sun, things get silhouetted a bit, the values get a bit more compressed, and you won't see all the different subtleties in hue that you see when the sun is behind you, light in the scene in front of you. And the painting becomes a lot more about the drawing and the values. So I'm trying to be very specific with the contours of these trees and buildings which are being silhouetted by the sky. To 
paint the rocks in the foreground. I'm trying to be very specific with the shadow shapes and also the edges of these shadow shapes as the softness or the sharpness of the edge will determine, will determine the texture of the rock as well as the type of shadow which is getting cast by the rock. Whether it's a form shadow which tends to have a softer edge or a cast shadow which tends to have a sharper edge especially close to where the shadow is getting cast. Here I'm painting in the long evening shadows which have a light blue purplish hue to them. And the colour for these shadows is made up from a mixture of the light which is getting reflected into them which is the blue of the sky and also the local colour of the object on which the shadow lays. So on a very white object such as this path which runs from the bottom corner of the painting towards the taller palm tree, as this is very white rock, the colour of the shadows are going to be very blue, as there isn't really any other local colour which is influencing the colour of the shadows, so in this area it really is just the reflected light from the sky which is causing the shadows colour. And on the areas which aren't as white, the shadows will be a bit darker and take on a bit of the local colour of the area on which the shadow is being cast. So I hope you enjoyed that video of me painting here in Nice. Uh, I've got to run now to catch my flight. I really enjoy painting in the evening light. There is always a bit more pressure because you have to work a bit quicker because the shadows change quite a lot and the colours as well. Um, but it is definitely a really nice light to try and capture. If you enjoyed that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you for another video back in England. Check out my next video to watch me paint a landscape in the glorious countryside of Somerset, the county where I was born.